2,000 abandoned uranium mines that have been documented, uh, but there's never been a comprehensive inventory. There also has been never a comprehensive human health study to address this toxic threat. So many of our people have been plagued with cancer, plagued with health impacts, and if you don't know that uranium, first it's you know something that the, the radioactivity you can't uh, taste, you can't smell it, you can't see it, so it's an invisible threat but it's also mutagenetic, mutagenetic, which means it can affect your genes uh, and it can affect future generations. So a lot of health issues that come from that kind of exposure. Uh, many of my relatives were uh, uranium mine workers. Uh, some of them actually helped to build uh, the head frame at the canyon mine. So I always tease them. They tease me. They're like, hey, I can get you a job application. And I, I, I respond. I say, no, 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 we're going to shut that mine down because I'm going to clean up your mess. Uh, and so, for those of you who don't know, uh, just about 74 miles, a little under 74 miles, six miles from the south rim of the Grand Canyon <laughs> is the Canyon Mine, which Energy Fuels Incorporated has proposed since the 1980s uh, to mine uranium in that area, just miles from the Grand Canyon, just miles uh, from the lifeblood of the southwest, the Colorado River, which more than 40 um, million people rely upon. And so, uh, this threat is something that we can all address in shaping the future outcome uh, to make sure that this mine never opens. So we have some information here with Hall No is another organization that I volunteer with. And Hall No is specifically focused on preventing the transport of uranium uh, coming through uh, the, not only through Flagstaff, because the Hall route would be from Canyon Mine, just uh, south of Tucson, uh, six miles from the south rim of the Grand Canyon. It would go down um, the road and uh, all the way to close to Williams over the 40, and then get off on Country Club, the overpass, and then head up 89, and then go through Cameron, go through uh, Tuba City, go through Kanta, all the way up to the White Mesa Mill, which is on Ute Mountain Ute lands, the only commercially operating uh, processing plant for uranium that exists in this country. And so uh, the important thing with this is that um, we have the ability here in Flagstaff to put our foot down, right, and not let this contamination, not lit uh, 12 trucks per day carrying up to 30 tons each of high level radioactive ore only covered in tarps. That would be the only thing protecting our communities from this toxic threat. Um, to prevent all those trucks per day coming through our community and um, just recently last, was it last year? I don't know, my time frame is messed up. Uh, last year the city of Flagstaff helped put the foot down at the demands of um, folks in the community and outline indigenous uh, neighbors uh, by passing a resolution to prevent the, uh, or calling um, you know, for opposition and preventing the uranium from coming through the communities. But we want uranium to be left in the ground. And I think that that's part of the reason we're all gathered here tonight and very honored to be able to host uh, the International Uranium Film Festival, which has been going on for eight years. Uh, and tonight we have the founders of the Uranium Film Festival who have come all the way from Brazil uh, and we have uh, some of the filmmakers here in attendance as well, which they will talk about. We will be uh, screening, and they'll talk a little bit more about this, uh, four short films, and we'll have a panel discussion afterwards. So it's an opportunity for us to not only learn more about these issues, reflect, but to build and hopefully be part of the larger international movements uh, to address this nuclear threat. Uh, and it's important to recognize that it's not, you know, the, the nuclear chain uh, what we call the nuclear chain, which is the nuclear fuel cycle from the mining to the, um, the shipping to the <laughs> processing or the milling to the energy production and the weapons production and then the waste is all something that starts here. It started right here with these abandoned uranium mines and the ongoing threat of opening up new mines is something that we have an opportunity to step up and address and make sure that we can leave it in the ground.